What's going on people? Today we're going to be learning how to make this explosive title in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So we're going to uh, make a fusion composition and just extend it to a reasonable length and come over into the fusion page and make a background node and connect that to the media out. Once you've got your FBX model, just drag that onto the node tree directly from the folder and it should appear like so. And then we're going to create a renderer 3D and connect those two together. After you've done this, you'll probably notice there's a merge between the render and the 3D. You don't need to do that. Just add the merge between the background and the media out and then click on the FBX node and resize it down to about 0.034. And this should uh, give us the ability to fully see our flashbang grenade. Then click on the FBX transform tab and just mess around with the Y value so we can get it nice and centered. You then want to add a cook tolerance uh, and attach it to the FBX node. This is where we're going to attach all our textures into the flashbang grenade. You then want to hold alt and drag and click diffuse color material and now we have our texture directly mapped to our, um, our 3D object. Let's go ahead and add a merge 3D in between the FBX mesh 3D and the renderer 3D and this is where we're going to add our spotlight just to give it a bit more depth. So add your spotlight and drag that back a little bit and then click on render a 3d enable lighting and then just resize the spotlight till you get sort of a nice uh, soft edge um, and that should be good now we want to make our animation so go to about 100 frames and drag the z value to about two or three till it's off camera and then go to uh, zero frame and make sure it's a negative value of about five or six so it's nice and small as you can see i forgot to keyframe it here so make sure you select your keyframes as you do this um, and that way we can get a nice smooth track of the grenade coming towards the screen now you want to go ahead and also uh, keyframe the rotation and you're going to notice the scene goes black but we'll fix that in a minute um, so like so just make sure you go from a zero frame and to about 100 frames keyframe the y-axis the rotation come to your spotlight and um, because the scene goes black it's going beyond our light so we just want to adjust our light a little bit so make sure the spotlight is selected um, and drag the blue nozzle backwards and that way we can keep our scene lit here I also uh, just adjusted the X values. I just wanted to give it a bit of a tilt. Um, so that made the animation a little bit more interesting. So just mess around and tweak around with your keyframes um, until you get sort of an animation you like. I then came to the spline editor and realized the animation was actually way too slow. So I opened it up a bit and just clicked on this little button here, highlighted the end two points uh, and dragged those into about a hundred frames. I then just uh, played back our animation to see where we were at and I kind of thought this was a good point to move uh, ahead with the edit. I then came and found this HDRI node um, on the internet and I'll leave this in the description along with the other asset. Um, and then what you want to do is set up a ward that goes into the reflect, uh, a sphere map that goes into reflect and the reflect that connects to the cook tolerance. And then you can drag your HDRI directly into the sphere map. And as you can see, I was playing around with the settings, but what you want to do is come to the specular uh, and up the refractive index, uh, just so we get that sort of shiny edge look. Um, also play around with the roughness, bring that down um, like I've done here. We should have the shiny looking flashbang, but the reflections are not properly coming through. So um, I think I play around with a bit here. I end up looking and so I want these bright streaks from the flames and the HDRI to be a lot more visible because this is what's going to be reflecting the flames at the end of the tutorial. So I really try and figure this out and play around with the settings. What I ended up doing is clicking back on the sphere map and just adjusting the, uh, the rotation of the sphere map so the, the streaks were more visible. I also clicked back on the ward and changed this to an orange. Um, you know, the whole idea of this is to reflect the flames we're going to add in a second so it has to have that reddish sort of look i then came back one more time to the sphere map uh, and really just fine-tuned my selection I, I wanted the flames to or the streaks to look like they're just just sort of uh, wrapping around that edge i then came and added our flames uh, in between the background and the merge too and now everything's starting to come together I then uh, added a glow after the merge too. I just fiddled about with the settings until I got something I liked. So have a mess around with that. Um, it's quite fiddly, I'm just trying to adjust and get something that looks like it's wrapping around uh, the grenade. Um, obviously you can go quite intense, but just bring the blend down. Uh, all you want is something subtle. Um, and this is what I ended up with. 
then make a render of 3D uh, and attach the FBX mesh 3D to the to the other renderer and we're going to add a merge and I, I really wanted to work on that light wrap and get something that looked, looked a little bit more realistic in terms of the flames actually wrapping around because it's coming from behind. So now you want to add an, uh, an edge detect Um, and then a road dilate and just copy the values I've got here make sure the road dilate is before the edge detect uh, and you can see this is where we're gonna emulate our sort of our light wrap come to the merge and make sure it's set to screen and then after that, I'm going to add a, a color corrector, make it orange. I'm just messing about with the colors here to see if it actually worked, and it had. So make that orange, and then we're going to add a blur, and this should sort of blend everything together. And as you can see, the light now wraps um, around the grenade. Kind of acts as like a soft glow as well. I then came back one more time and adjusted the edge detection. This is a lot of freestyle work. When I uh, do these, I often have uh, sort of no end point in mind. I just sort of freestyle and see what works and what doesn't. Um, so it's a lot of fiddling about, but as you can see, we're starting to get a nice sort of clip here. I come back into the blur, bring that down. And you can see we get the edges a bit more uh, visible here. I didn't want it to be too bright because then it looks a bit more like a glow. I just wanted it to look like it'd been wrapped. So I come to the merge and brought that down really subtle. And as you can see the difference here, um, we're kind of getting that light, uh, that light wrap effect that we've been looking for. You can then add a color corrector and just tweak the colors. Um, but we want to add some blur. Um, I messed around with a depth blur and didn't really get something that looked nice so I added a tilt shift blur instead um, and this kind of gave it that bokeh effect as it moved towards the camera. And I upped the blur strength and you can get really nice effect um, without having to worry too much about the depth. So I moved that about and just saw what works. I then moved back to the edit page and added an adjustment clip as I wanted those sort of the, the black bars that you get on top of something a little bit more cinematic the aspect ratio change so a quick way to do this is just add an adjustment clip um, and do a hundred on the top and a hundred on the bottom I then moved over to the color page and added some film grain uh, mess around with the film grain there's so many different settings as you've probably seen on my previous tutorials but just up the grain strength. Uh, also go into the advanced controls, uh, mess around with the, the mid-tones, the shadows and the highlights, just to get something a little bit more realistic. Um, but yeah, really dial that in and see what looks good for your specific project. I then came and added just a text title, uh, something to sort of finish off the scene. Um, I wrote Bluetooth Films. I then just changed to uh, a different font, adjusted the sizing, the kerning, and the, all the tracking, just to get something a little bit more sleek. I then wanted to tie it all together, so I made another adjustment clip and added my CRT machine, which you can find over at bluetooth.com. So I applied that, I then come down to the bottom, um, I adjusted the global size, made that back to one, changed the lens distortion to zero, I continued to adjust the CRT to get something quite specific. Uh, I took down the grain power and adjust the pixel size. I ended up bringing the gain down a little bit and that was pretty much it. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot from this tutorial. I've learned a bit myself um, and yeah, this was our final product. And if you're using DaVinci Resolve, guys, check out the full collection of my editing plugins at Bluetooth.com. These tools seriously level up your workflow. From CRT, VHS, and animated titles, I've got you covered. Cut your bags and we was up, we was up all night, right? All the functions set. When I turn my back, you froze, froze.